another brave attempt training session. This time we're going to dive into the AI tool Gemini and specifically how it can be used with Google Docs. Let's get to it. Hey there, everybody. My name is Sean and I am a STEM educator and administrator in New York City Public Schools. I work with some amazing students and teachers here. Today we're going to be diving into the world of Gemini, a powerful AI tool that can be a game changer in a lot of situations for us. Now, You've all probably been using AI in a number of formats, whether it's chatting with Alexa, getting online, shopping suggestions on Amazon, or on your social media feed, right? And maybe you're thinking that AI that's generative might be slightly more complicated, and there's some truth to that. It can be. But it's also an incredible tool that can help us learn more and grow in a lot of ways. Uh, you can think of Gemini a bit as a smart assistant that can help you with writing or researching, problem solving, those kinds of things. But to be honest, AI is not perfect. It can sometimes make mistakes. It can misunderstand things. That's why it's important to use it carefully and to do it critically. So we're going to explore how to do that today, focusing on how Gemini can specifically help us within a Google few different Docs. things that Gemini can do for you, including using it for content creation, research, and creative applications. Gemini itself is a type of artificial intelligence called a large language model. It's been trained on a bunch of text data so it can understand and generate human-like text, which means it can help us write, translate languages, write different kinds of creative content, answer your questions in an informative way. Now, AI tools like Gemini can be incredibly helpful for students with disabilities or struggling readers or, or really anyone who needs help with an idea. But it's essential to remember that AI is a tool, not a replacement for human thought and creativity. We need to use it wisely and ethically, and I highly recommend taking Google's course for AI literacy early in your exploration. To begin, let's understand Google also has different models for using Gemini independently or integrating it into your education workspace. Before we dive directly into Docs, let's spend a moment directly in Gemini. If you've never written prompts before or have struggled to get the results you've wanted in the past, let me just advise quickly on how to create quality prompts. Go ahead and write or use voice to text when creating a prompt by having it speak as naturally as you would with a friend without any of the jargon. Be specific about what you want, how you want it presented, how it should be formatted, and use important keywords if necessary. But don't ramble on either with too much information. Keep it clear, concise, give it context. Tell Gemini if you want it to act like a seventh grade social studies teacher from Nebraska and that the audience is a parent of a struggling student. Give examples if possible, and it is an iterative process. If the output is imperfect, let it know how to correct it. Let's say you're writing a science report and you're stuck on the introduction. You can use Gemini to help you get started. Just click help me write and give it a prompt, like write an introduction about the effects of climate change on polar bears. Gemini will generate some text, but remember this is just a starting point. You need to review, edit, and add your own thoughts. You can ask Gemini to elaborate, summarize, or change the tone of the text. Gemini can also be a research assistant. Let's say you want to find information about renewable energy sources. You can ask Gemini to summarize research on solar power or compare wind and solar energy. Remember, Gemini provides information based on the data it was trained on, so it's essential to verify the information from other reliable sources. So let's dive into researching using Gemini. I showed you before how using Gemini in the side panel will help automatically summarize any long documents you have right there. And remember those tools I showed before that can help you refine it, rephrase it, or synthesize it into bullet points if you need. Whatever helps in understanding the content more fully. But it doesn't just get that information from the document you're in. You can go ahead and summarize and find information from other documents you own too. Let's start with an easy task like summarizing. I can have it summarize my notes from a lesson that I had previously, or students can have it summarize a different document they were working with. You can use the at symbol to find that document in your drive. Let me summarize these lecture notes from the psych class. I realized that didn't come out exactly the way I wanted, so now let me ask it to summarize it as bullet points because I think that will help me review a little bit more easily. Let's preview it with the eye icon. Yeah, I like that. Let's go ahead and insert it. 
That'll definitely help me as I study for the test or work on writing future papers for this class. I can have it save time by summarizing items from an agenda. Or use voice to text to get a meeting transcript that then can be summarized. As an administrator, I also wanted to review some materials. So I'm gonna actually have it take a look at this facilities guide for an event we have coming up and decide if it would be worthwhile to have it in that space. And if so, which areas of this venue could be used for different activities we have related to a different document. It's complex, but it's able to synthesize this information quickly and easily. Again, all it takes is using that at symbol and finding the document you want. This might get you better in the habit though of naming your documents appropriately. One great time saver is even having it summarize all of my unopened emails in Gmail and then create a summary for me and prioritize what I should respond to and how I should respond. Let's get that email inbox clutter down to a minimum. Do you remember that ethics of AI course summary I was putting together? Well, you know what? Now I want to go ahead and add specific information from other research into AI ethics that I found. I can go ahead and link to that research document and have it go ahead and summarize those ideas and explain how I can include them better into examples in my existing syllabus. You can have it go ahead and quickly put together bullet point summaries of any research articles you pulled that were relevant to the work you're doing. That will help you synthesize that information and put it together more easily for the research paper or whatever it is you're working on. And of course, Gem and I can help with the writing of those as well, as we've seen. Now, part of being ethical is letting people know that the creation of my materials was done using AI but I also want to make sure I use the correct citations as well. And it always gets really complicated of APA formats and whatnot. So I'm going to actually ask Gemini to help you write the citation for that research article I just posted as well. So clearly Gemini within Docs is an incredibly helpful research assistant. I can go ahead and grab stories. I can get relevant sources. I can go ahead and explore those Find links to materials right there with Google Search. Pair that with research done directly in Google Scholar and you have a winning combination for learning. If in my writing and research, I wanna make sure it's searching the web instead of just generating its own responses, I can go ahead and let it know to search the web like in this example where I'm asking it to help me write a paragraph explaining if lightning can strike the same place twice. I find that information interesting and living here in New York City, now I'm curious how many times a year does lightning tend to strike the Empire State Building? We should always verify our research, but we can get quick answers to work from immediately through the use of Gemini. Let's just say you want to learn more about Google tools. Gemini can help with that too. I can ask it, how do I make this document pageless? And they'll go ahead and give me a thorough walkthrough to help me make it happen. Or I can ask it, how do I go about adding markups to something like this? Well, it'll give me that answer too. So whether it's deep diving into scientific inquiry or just discovering how the tools at your fingertips work, Gemini will help you with all of it. Okay, we've gone and explored researching and summarizing with Gemini inside Google Docs. So now I want you to use Gemini to take in text from your content area and summarize it. Then I want you to use that information to create either an outline for a presentation on the topic or a student's study guide to review the material in some game-based manner. Go ahead and start exploring. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you realize now how much Gemini is a powerful tool that can enhance our writing and our research and even allow us to be more creative. And Google is bringing even more to the forefront that they'll announce soon. But remember that it is a tool, it is not a magic wand. We need to use it thoughtfully and critically. Uh, if we understand its strengths and its limitations, we can harness the power of AI to support our learning and growth. And I hope you enjoy exploring and experimenting with Gemini in Docs and all other places in Google Workspace. Take care.